Well, come on in. Come and see the studio. So, um, this area here is um, where I do all the artwork, so any works on paper, any developments on paper. The hands on uh, and working on art, fresh artwork in here, in this end. So, when people come in, they enter here and they see little display area here. <laughs> so, t shirts and uh, tote bags that I sell with. Um, little sketches on that I've done might be to do with tennis, which I do mud on tennis, and uh, especially now Wimbledon's starting. So I do lots of drawings of tennis players. In fact, I've just sold two sketchbooks to Wimbledon for their museum, which is really exciting. So this is kind of storage, um, also a display area and uh, plan chests and framed works in here. And these th these pieces are generally etchings. And this end of the studio is more dedicated to the printmaking area where I make um, prints and I also develop the plates. This is my etching press. Um, it, it's effectively a giant mangle, but um, really, really excellent press. I bought it second hand and um, uh, it's <laughs> one of those things that you don't want to have to move too often really. Um, now this area, I'm sorry, this is a result of us moving house, so there's a lot of stuff in here that isn't usually in here, like my bike, which is <laughs> currently having its front wheel repaired. <laughs> so this is very much sort of working, um, producing things that I'll get. Uh my name is Julia Midgley, and I'm a documentary artist, which means that I draw things that happen in front of me um, without the use of a camera. It's also called reportage illustration and effectively um, it's a bit like being a war artist. I'm a fly on the wall and I go into places sometimes for a day or sometimes over a period of a year to record events as they take place. I always drew as a child and then went to art school for five years, which was the traditional route in those days. Um, and after two years, uh, we had to decide what area of art we wanted to go into and I was advised to do illustration because I was always drawing. Once I graduated I went to London and started off being an illustrator but increasingly found that actually that wasn't what I wanted to do at all really. I just wanted to draw things that interested me that um, I felt were somehow connected to life um, and current affairs and um, gradually I was able to turn my attention more towards that sort of career. When I was at Manchester Art School in the second year, we were all told to take our sketchbooks and, and approach a company or an organisation and ask if we could go in there and make drawings of what they did. And I made approaches to the Mounted Police and to Granada. And I never thought Granada would come back to me. And the Mounted Police came back first and they offered me uh, you know, the time spent with them, which was brilliant. So, just about to accept. And then Granada came back and said, well, yeah, would you like to come and work on Coronation Street? So, of course, then I felt so guilty because I had to turn the mountain place down. I think I started working for John Moore's, which was then called Liverpool Polytechnic, in 1987, something like that, late, late 80s anyway, and working in the graphics and illustration department. Um, I was always part-time because I wanted to always be in the studio half the week. Um, I had young children, so well, at that point I only had one son, but I, I knew that I wanted to have that studio time. So by working for half a week, then that, that would cover the cost of me being in the studio, if, for example, I wasn't selling any work or something like that. Um, and that was a pattern I stuck to all the time I worked at John Moore's. And I think it's a particularly normal way of going about uh, working patterns in art schools because part of the contract of employment is that you have your own consultancy. Or well, it was at the time, anyway. And so it, it works very well in art schools because the students want to be taught by people who have their own practice. And you want to be up to date. So um, it kind of makes sense. And this is Jeanette Barnes, who was a student at Liverpool. She did fine art at the art school in Liverpool um, and then went to the Royal College and then went to the Royal Academy of Art, or well, 
can't remember which one was first actually. But she does these huge drawings of buildings and architecture in London. She's just published a book, which is absolutely amazing. So this year, I'm the artist in residence for the bicentenary year of Liverpool John Moores University. How it came about was that um, was it 2017, it was the 25th anniversary of the Roscoe Lectures. And I'd started going to one or two of them and I had my sketchbook. And then I thought, oh, it'd be great to do all of these. So I got in touch with uh, Janet Martin at Corporate Comms. And um, she luckily thought that was a good idea. And um, then I did the rest of those lectures, which was a fantastic thing to do because it's really, really interesting. <laughs> and they're all different. Um, and it didn't mean I had to go very far. It was just, you know, nice thing to do. So that was, these are 2017. And I think this was when Mark Carney, yeah, Mark Carney, who was governor of the Bank of England, wasn't he, at the time? So there you see, I've done it on a different coloured piece of paper and stuck it in. Oh, and this is fantastic. Um, Lorna Muirhead, it was her, I think it was her 70th birthday when she gave her a talk. And um, it was the end of her year as Lord Lieutenant of Liverpool, wasn't she? So then this year, I spotted that um, it was the bicentenary. I didn't realise till, it must have been February or March, I think. I had a great response and they said, oh yes, yeah, so can you do the graduation in 10 days time? And, oh, right, okay. <laughs> That's a bit intimidating because there's so many people in the graduation event at the cathedral, but it was brilliant. And luckily, it's repeated sort of two or three times in the course of a day, so you can kind of capture bits on the repeat, luckily. Um, and so what I did, I have a couple, well, different types of sketchbooks, and um, I went with two sketchbooks. One has thinner pages on, but they kind of encouraged me to work more quickly because pen skins, skims over it. The other sketchbook um, has much thicker watercolour cream tinted paper, which I love. That's better for accepting watercolour on the site. It absorbs it better, it doesn't wrinkle or anything like that. So I go with two sketchbooks and some, a few separate sheets of paper, none of them too big, round about A4 to A3. And um, choose different viewpoints during the course of the day. So for the graduations, I started off seated in the cathedral, not far from the front, and then I'd moved to the other side. And then I think at the end of the day, I went up on the bridge in the cathedral, you know, there's a bridge there, and, and looked down, which is a brilliant viewpoint. Nearly all my work is on paper, because essentially I draw. That's what I do. I'm not really a painter. I do quite enjoy painting, but I, my first instinct is always to pick up something that draws with a line, and it's a moving line, you know, and it's kind of like handwriting to me now. It sort of comes almost naturally, but the first choice I'll make when I'm working is what sort of paper I'm going to use. So um, I, I will usually turn up with a selection of papers. If I'm in a dark room somewhere, or then I might use a dark paper. Um, otherwise, I might choose a tinted paper or, you know, that's, I've got to be comfortable with the surface I'm working on. And, and then it's what sort of pen, is it a pencil thing, you know, um, and it, that's really the first two steps. And then I sit down, I'll sit and appear to be doing nothing for a while, but I just take in what's happening and think, well, what's the most best viewpoint, like you and the camera, where's the best place to put it? And if you like, my eyes are like the camera. I've got to choose where I think is the best view. Um, and then start work. And, and I might see somewhere that I suddenly realise, oh, that looks interesting over there. So I'll go there the next time. Um, and it's usually pencil, dip pen and ink, um, and watercolour. Watercolour is quick and easy, and, and you have to be very fresh with it. There's no time to get too detailed with watercolour. So it's, it's a very good medium for me. Um, I tend not to take acrylics with me, but I will use them in the studio after if I need to. So these watercolour boxes look filthy, but the point is that all this colour on the mixing area, I use again. So it's, um, 
Not quite as disgusting, it might appear. It's all deliberate. This is a really good colour, Payne's grey. That most useful, that's why it's nearly empty, but, but I have two much bigger ones here. <laughs> They're a bit good to fit in, I think, as you go along. And, um, and the fact that you don't need to be photographically accurate, you can rely on the fact that what you're doing is trying to say this is kind of what it was like not this is exactly what it was like. You know, that's the difference, I think. You can't just record things exactly, but what would be the point? Because I'm trying to put my impression of what I saw, not being totally exact. Sometimes I'll put some wash on pages before I arrive, so there's a tint or a bit of color on them. Um, if I'm drawing, well, for instance, archaeologists who tend to work very, very slowly on the same place all the time. So then I can do a completely coloured, finished piece of work. But if it's, uh, for example, horse racing or something like that, or um, like a theatre where people are moving all the time, it's the people I'm interested in. So the backgrounds aren't that important to get the colour in. I'll make little notes and colour them in later. I'm very interested in capturing movement, but the end result for me is a static drawing on a piece of paper, but hopefully it gives a sense of movement, and that's what, I suppose, interests me. Um, and people have often said, oh, you, you obviously make it look as if it's moving, and, and I don't do that consciously. It's just the way I see things, I think. Um, but I do like to give a sense of life and things going on in the drawing. So I think it's a really friendly university it's very community orientated and it's lovely to go back because i know so many people anyway and most years since i've retired I've, I've been back to give a talk or a lecture or a drawing workshop so i haven't lost touch completely and um, it's just very very nice to be working over the whole of the university because normally whenever i am working there it's just in the art school but on this occasion I'm recording all sorts of different activities that I haven't really been involved with before. So, and in the open day, I was absolutely amazed by the nursing, nursing school and the, the equipment they've got is absolutely staggering. I couldn't believe it. They had a whole A&E set up, you know, and they had all these mannequins that kind of breathe and just like I saw the military had, only more recent, obviously. And it was so interesting talking to them and, and, and they were, I, I they seemed genuinely pleased that I'd been sent you know, so um, I'm learning a lot more about the university, but everybody I meet is really receptive, really friendly, and I do kind of, you get this feel it's like one big family, and it sounds like an awful uh, cliche. I think it's become increasingly so in recent years, you know, that it's embraced so much more of that good feeling somehow. <laughs>